So the new book, how did the new book, what was the genesis? Where did the idea for this new book come from? I think it started off with Eric Buto because he was already an established author. He wrote so many series for the the Four Dummies series. Right. And he's actually worked with Jen Herman on the Instagram marketing for dummies and Instagram marketing for businesses dummy series. And I, I guess Entrepreneur Press was looking for a new book about social media. And Eric, having known that Jen was tied together with the 360 Marketing Squad, that's how it was presented to us. He's like, would you be interested in this? And of course, we were interested. Yes. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And Mike was like, I know you're interested, but would you have time to write? And then so we were like, oh, wait a second. How many conferences do we have coming up? What's going to happen? But we pulled it off. You know, we got it together. I mean, a lot of it, I would say, even in the book, DP, is really pulled from what we usually share and preach about on stage. So it's it's actually so cool to see that written in chapters, because if you're not at any of these conferences, you probably have never heard, really heard what we offer and what our thoughts are, our framework, our strategies and so on. Well, not only that, but if you have seen each of the authors speak, your hand could not possibly have written fast enough to capture all the valuable information in there. So to have it all gathered together for you in one easy to reference space, what's the value of that? Well, I'm looking at the price right here and it says that it's available for $24.99 in paperback, which it looks like it's an oversized paperback a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So check it out. It's on amazon.com right now. The Ultimate Guide to Social Media Marketing. And it was released on August 25th of 2020. So this is not some warmed over crap from the year 2008. This is, these scones are hot out of the oven. And I'm sure as tasty as tasty can be. Can you give us some takeaways from your section of the book specifically that you think might be valuable to someone who's kind of thinking about this live streamy thing? Yeah, you know, we definitely dive into live streaming about not only just the tech, but why it's so valuable and why now is the perfect time to do it. Because we all crave community and we all crave authenticity. And when you show up on camera and you are yourself, the way that you describe and explain things, people will get to have a sense of who you are and what you stand for and whether or not they want to work with you. And that that for me, I feel like gets you on the fast track to key decision makers. Because once they see you, they know you and they like you, they're like, oh, I wanna work with that person. Well, especially when they meet you in person and go, you're exactly like your presence on camera. I guarantee you, you get that a lot. I do. I also get, wow, you're shorter than I expected. (laughs) And I always get, wow, you're a lot taller than I expected. Well, yeah, because I'm not a two inch, well, let's see how many inch head. On the screen. Yeah. But that's true. And I want to go back to something you said in the last week's episode about why you started doing live streaming. And it comes back to that word demonstration. I'm demonstrating who I am, what I do, and how I do it, and how I'm different than some social media coordinator who jumped themselves up by throwing up, you know, a shingle and saying that I'm the founder social media strategist for me Corp. Corp. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I love the fact that you started out as Stephanie Liu. Uh, you know, it, what was is it, the company named Stephanie Liu Marketing? Yeah, simple. It's just Stephanie Liu Marketing. It wasn't, I didn't want to hide behind, you know, some fictitious name. It's like, this is me. And if we've ever worked before, then you know who I am. If you don't, then that's okay. Because majority of my clients, I would say DP, are mostly word of mouth. Well, usually when someone reaches out to me, I'm always asking them, how did you hear about me? Because if they came from another existing client, then I know that they've already filtered themselves. I'm like, okay, cool. So then I know where you stand, you know the process, but if you're, you know, a rando person slid into the DMs on Instagram, I'm like, I don't know how I could possibly help you. I, if, even if I try to give you a proposal, it'd probably shock you because you probably think that I'm just Instagram influencer. It's, and it's not. And also, as we talked about last week, they already know that your services are white tablecloth, concierge, sommelier, très chic, and therefore there's a price involved with it, but it's a high value price for those people who like 
white glove, white tablecloth servants. Yeah, exactly. It was, it's so funny too, because I had just wrapped up a strategy for a client just a couple of weeks ago. And one of the strategies was for her to develop a virtual marketing team. And her first thing was like, I don't even know where to find these people. And I was like, it's okay. I got you. Because I know exactly what job description you need and what roles need to be filled in the order that needs to be done in order for you to reach your goal. And so once we had done the strategy, then it was, let me invite you into my network. So you've been in the strategist group. You know the brilliant minds that we have in there. And it was just a matter of introductions of, oh, you need someone to do paid media for you? Boom, this is the great person because they've asked these questions or we've worked together, but now you're a part of that inner circle. And my client was very much like, I never would have known this. I probably would have been on Fiverr or Upwork and probably would have gotten burned because I wasn't asking the right questions. And I was like, no, no, no. This is the job description that you need to put out there and ask them, can you do this? And you're not going to hire them forever and ever. You're going to put them on a trial basis. (laughs) Here's this one project. If you nail it, awesome. We'll, We'll continue our relationships. If not, then you move on. This episode of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast is brought to you by Culture Chicken Brand Egg. What's that? It's one of my most requested presentations, now available as in-person live or virtual online presentations. If you've got a group or association that loves presentations that inspire, inform, entertain, and get you going at the same time, we should talk. Head on over to dpknewton.com slash speaking to download my full speaker media kit today. And let's start talking about how I can help you get your party started. Well, and the whole thing is people know whether they're someone who I don't have any problem paying for a guide or an expert or a coach versus someone like me who's I'm, I'm taking the long hard way through the mud and barbed wire. I'm going to teach myself, darn it. And by the end of it, I'm going to know this upside down, backwards and forwards, but it's a long slog and it's painful. I pay in sweat and blood while other people would like to go, you know what? Give me the gel coat nails that last two weeks and save me a whole lot of time. Reference from previous episode, (laughs) but it's very true, you know? And you are definitely full service across the board and people know that and it's very clear, but I want to go back to the word demonstration. Every time you're on camera, you're demonstrating who you are, what you do, how you do it and how you're different and that you're pleasant and that you're kind and that you're helpful and you're decent And of all the videos I've watched, anytime that you've done any type of cell, it's been like a tiny baby bunny cell, which is, look how soft and fluffy this is. If you'd be interested, it's there, but don't watch. Don't scare me. And that's fine because people are like, you're putting out great content. I feel good about you. And you have something I can pay you for? Great. I want to pay back because you've given me thousands of dollars worth of value. Buying a book for $24.99 or taking a course is a no brainer because people are like, I owe you. Mm -hmm. And people don't like to owe people. They like to (laughs) pay people back and then learn more and feel like they owe you and pay you more, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But mostly you create an affinity. And this goes back to brand marketing, which I know you're a master of brand affinity If you can get someone to be so in love with your brand that they tattoo it on their forearm, like Harley Davidson, yeah, you know, you've done something right. Yeah. So do you have any tattoos? That's my next question. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I would never ask a lady that, but I will ask you this. What is the biggest thing you're working on right now, now that the book is done? Ooh, a LinkedIn learning course. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, you're actually the first person to know this. (laughs) Bingo. I got more exclusives coming to you, nonfiction brand world. Yeah, so a production company had reached out. They had been pitching the idea of live streaming to LinkedIn. And LinkedIn had, I think their last course about live streaming was done maybe like 2014, like years and years ago. And as you know, so much has evolved since then as far as like platforms and usability And so they wanted someone who could speak to live streaming that was good on camera and knows what they're actually talking about. 
And because I was so active on LinkedIn, also having had early access to LinkedIn Live, I came across the radar. And this is what I mean by like live streaming gets you on a first name basis with key decision makers is that my video was shared with somebody else. And that's cool about LinkedIn is you could see what companies looked at your videos, what their titles are and whatnot. And what I started to realize is that this name kept popping up. This person kept liking my videos. And eventually that person sent me a message on LinkedIn and said, Hey, I'm working on this project. I would love to know if you would be interested. It's specifically about live streaming. And because I had already done a course on live streaming, I'd spoken on stages about live streaming. I was like, Oh, this is already in the back because I have, I already have an outline of everything that I teach and I would just have to revamp it for 2020. And yeah, so that's something that I'm working on. I should have it done by like mid-September. I'm excited about it. How would people find this thing? Does it have a title yet? I don't think it has a title just yet, but I know that it's going to be a part of a series. But if you're a part of LinkedIn Learning, right, where they have all of the courses that are there, that will be one of the courses that gets your feet wet about live streaming. Especially with like, which live streaming platforms should you invest your time in, right? Because they're not all created equal. What Facebook offers is very different from YouTube versus Instagram and how you use the technology to support it, whether it's native or through third parties, they're all different. And so we cover that as just the basic of, okay, you want to do live streaming. Where do you even start? Yeah, because that's a, that's a, a very interesting jungle trek. If you're doing it yourself, says... Uh... Jungle guy DP here with his machete. My God, I think I lost a few fingers on that one. But let me tell you, live streaming is such a great technique to put in your toolbox, whether you are working for other brands or you're working for the most important brand yourself. Because for me, like if I were to write a 600,000 word blog post, that's going to be minimum three hours probably more like five when I get all done and everything. Live stream, like uh, I see something cool, boom, put it on camera, use Ecamm Live, bing, I'm up and I'm doing my thing. Seven minutes later, I'm done, I'm gone. And then I've got this piece of content. I can cut up any number of different ways if I want to, or just leave it where it is. Mm -hmm. And I have successfully demonstrated who I am, what I do and how I do it how I'm different, what value I might be able to offer, and hopefully created some type of relationship with you. And I want to test this out with you. I believe that people who do live streams do not, or people who don't do live streams have no idea how powerful the connection of me looking into a camera lens is. Because right now I'm looking right into a camera lens with a smile on my face And out of my peripheral vision, I can see that you're down there smiling of about six inches over there. And to you, it's a one-to-one conversation. A one-to-one, even Mm -hmm. though it might be one to 50, 500, 500,000. To me, I don't get the power, but you feel the power. And that, I mean, if you said to any old school salesman, if you could sit in a chair at your home and talk to the entire world, What value is that to you, Mr. or Mrs. Salesman? It's life-changing. It's life-changing. I usually tell people that live streaming can get you in front of the most important people a lot faster than it would had you just sat behind your desk, you know, sending out emails for five years. Oh, yeah, definitely. When they're able to put a face to a name at that point, they're like, I've seen this person. And then you become top of mind and tip of tongue. Even these days when people are asking for referrals, I'm like, oh, I just saw something, you know, and because I have a very strong visual recall. I'm like, there, I, yeah, I remember seeing that. And, and then I could just pull that name out or I could do a search and then boom, there it is. You need to talk to this person. Yeah, that's exactly what happened with your new book. I remember seeing something. I don't know. Was it a couple of days ago? Maybe <laughs> a pre, you know, get your pre-sale or whatever. As I'm prepping for this phone call, I go, wait a minute, Stephanie wrote a new book. So I type in Stephanie Lou, new book, and up comes the Amazon link right there. That little ping leveled you up. Live streaming is a level up unlock like few others. If you can do it, 
Let me let me pretend to be the introvert who doesn't do this type of thing. First of all, sure. Stephanie, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm an ambivert. There are times where I could be very extroverted and there are times where I'm just like in fetal position, just need my time. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people out there, and I was one of them, who like to say, I'm an introvert. That's why I don't go to social functions or, you know, networking events, LinkedIn lives. I, I, I don't I don't know. Eh, I'm an introvert. And then I realized, no, that was me wanting to get out of doing something that I didn't feel 100% comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered something. Oh, yeah. There's a thing called rehearsal. And you can get comfortable with something by doing it over and over and over again. For example, I use Ecamm Live when I do my live streams. And one of the settings in there is save to computer or save video to computer. It doesn't actually broadcast anywhere, but it creates the video. You can then do your whole thing and then watch it, critique yourself, work on the things that you kind of feel weak on and do that until you go, well, it's not perfect, but I know I'm going to get better because I've lost my fear. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fear or the fear plus preparation turns into excitement. Yeah. Hey, nonfiction branders, did you know I wrote a book? Well, I did, and it's called Rotoma, the ROI of social media top of mind. I wrote it with my colleague Spencer X. Smith, and it's all about Rotoma, an acronym that means Return on Top of Mind Awareness. Best-selling author and NYU Stern School of Business professor Scott Galloway called it a book that starches the fluff from social media and helps managers allocate capital and find the unicorn among unicorns, ROI. And chief content officer at Marketing Pro, Ann Handley said, this isn't just a practical way to think about the return on social media. It's also a spot on accurate way to reframe your social efforts. Check out all the five star reviews on Amazon by searching Rotoma, R-O-T-O-M-A. Pick up your copy today and start building your personal, professional and small business brand the Rotoma way. So what other ways can people engage with you? Oh, gosh. I mean, so aside from the website, lightscameralive.com or even the Facebook group, I mean, honestly, most people, they, they feel comfortable enough to send me a direct message on Facebook, just on my Facebook business page, especially if it's an episode that they've watched. I mean, I get that happy brain chemical release when someone says, hey, I just watched your video and I have a question about, about X, Y, and Z. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, let's go. Because if you invested time in getting to know my material, then I'm more than happy to help you because whatever question someone has for me can be my next show topic, could be my next email, could be the next story that I share on stage, right? But for someone, <laughs> this is funny. I had someone who reached out today, DP, who was very much like, how do I get more views on my Facebook Live? I was like, oh, I just did this opening keynote for the Leap Into Live Streaming Bootcamp, which they put on YouTube. I was like, here, this, ex this is how to launch your Facebook Live show. And then I sent the link to him and he goes, yeah, 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 that's great and all. But what I really want is, but I was like, that <laughs> keynote was literally like 45 minutes step by step of how to get people excited and sitting on the edge of their seat to watch your Facebook Live. And if you didn't even watch that all, like, that's it. I'm like... There's nothing else for me to offer you advice because if you're not going to take that first step to just even listen and absorb the information that was freely just given to you, then, you know, the conversation ends there. That guy was asking you to do his homework for him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's kind of funny because earlier today I saw Marcus Sheridan on LinkedIn posted something about that where someone's asking for some help on something. His first response is, that's great. Why don't you send me what you have so far? And then we can look at it. And then he went on to say, parenthetically, by the way, 50% of people never send anything back, which is a one fantastic filter. If you haven't even done a rough draft of your homework, yeah, we don't have anything to talk about because I'm not doing your homework for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, um, I could Google that for you, but... I have other yeah. places to be right now. <laughs> right. And you've got a 45 minute resource that is actually free to you. Oh my gosh. Well, but that's 
That's the world we live in. And that's why Mm -hmm. I choose to align myself with people I find tremendously valuable, entertaining, personable, human, and wonderful. And that's why I love talking with Stephanie Liu. Stephanie, how are things for your business in COVID right now? Mm -hmm. Is it net plus zero or? It's, It's plus. It's been very interesting because live streaming is now that thing where CEOs and CMOs are like, crap, we should have been doing this. (laughs) You know, with more people spending their time online, they're now realizing the power of live streaming, especially in the sense that so many people are hanging out on Zoom. Yeah. And they want to do something that's different, that's more produced. And so they discover that live streamers know how to keep an audience engaged And this is something that I had predicted back in 2018. I was like, live video production remotely is going to be a thing. There's going to be a CMO. There's going to be a CEO that has to do an interview, has to sit in front of a camera remotely, and is going to need media training remotely. So that's where the live streamers come into play. And so that's where a lot of the companies have reached out and they've said, we're doing an annual shareholder meeting, or we have a call with investors and we want it to look different. We don't just want to be those little postage stamps at the very top of the Zoom call. We want it to be special. And that has definitely become its own service in and of itself. You know, the talent showcases, shareholder meetings, quarterly shareholder, all, like all of that is now shifted online and they want to step it up. So those that are just now embracing video, good for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's awesome. Those that are live streamers have now embraced live video production remotely like that's now a thing and that's one of the areas that our company has really just blown up and you know you develop those skill sets you develop that toolkit and you've got that toolbox that you just walk right up like miss capable carpenter and say Mm -hmm. you know just describe to me the perfect home exactly i'll build it for you yep oh and by the way i'm not even going to talk about technologies because you don't care about that. You just want to have a Zoom call where your background your doesn't make your head, blah, 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 you know, expand outward and make you look like some kind of low rent alien commander on a ship. Hello, I've <laughs> come to your country to meet your leader. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been on LinkedIn and somebody will be promoting their CEO like, oh, our CEO has been on this, you know, television broadcast and whatnot. And then you see that CEO get ripped apart in the comments because their lighting is wrong or, yeah. you know, the audio is bad. And then the PR agency gets black for It's like, how could you put your client out there looking and sounding like that in 2020? Like there yeah. is no excuse for that. So that's where I see a lot of live streamers embracing that opportunity. Because for me, it's no longer about how to be confident on camera. I feel like those that are launching courses about confidence on camera, that's like five years ago. Now it's media training. Now it's how do you show up and clearly communicate in a concise way that you could repurpose as sound bites across everywhere. Yeah. And even things like if you're a company of more than five people, where's your video set? I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Where is, and it doesn't have to be huge. I mean, it could literally be six feet wide behind you. It's got your logo up there, you know, blah, blah, whatever it is, have it designed, branded your brand colors, you know, and by the way, marketing people hint for you. If your CEO looks great on camera, you're not going to have a problem ever with budget. But -hmm. if that CEO looks like crap on camera, They're going to nickel and dime everything because they don't see the value. If I go in and say, we're going to get a a Sure SM7B for you because we want to have a microphone that makes you look like Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan experience. And, oh, he goes, oh, yeah, I watched that show. That, you know, the the one that looks big and manly. Yeah. Okay. How much is it? $500 or $400. No problem. Versus $79 for a, for a Samson microphone. What the heck mm-hmm. is that? Yeah. Yeah. One of my main stakeholders for my client went out on maternity leave. And so she, when she first signed on as a client, 
for all of my clients, I don't know if you guys give your clients onboarding gifts, but I gave my clients onboarding gifts because video is my thing. And so I would give them an external mic. I gave them like a Blue Yeti mic. And then eventually I gave them like the Logitech Brio. And then when COVID happened, she went on maternity leave and she had left her gear behind. And everyone in the office was like, oh my gosh, we have, we have a mic. We have a real mic. We have a real camera. <laughs> and so without even knowing, I was like the hero in the office just because I gave them something that they could really use. And now it's being checked out by other executives in the office. And I think that's if you could give that value, that the gift that just keeps on giving to your clients, by oh, all means, go for it. And by the way, demonstrates who you are, what you do, and how you do it, and how you're different. Mm -hmm. That's what that gift does. You didn't give them a gift basket from Harry and David with a couple of pears and some brie. You gave them a tool yep. that one allows you to work more efficiently with them, but also predicts what they're going to need in the future when COVID hits the fan. <laughs> Boy, hmm, who's more valuable, an order taker or a distant seer of the future? Yeah. I'm going to say it's going to be the wizard, Stephanie Liu of Lights Camera Live, who I am delighted to be talking to again. We're coming to an end of another episode. I just want to give you another chance to let people know how they might connect with you. What's your number one social channel? I would definitely say Facebook. The best place if you want like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's going to be a Facebook direct message. And that's usually just for questions. If you want to do business together, then LinkedIn. That's where I usually filter people is through LinkedIn because then you'd be able to see the work that I've done, the projects, case studies, and so on. Yeah, there you go. Her name is Stephanie Liu, L-I-U. And you can find her all over the place. She's fantastic. If you can ever see her speak live, tremendous value delivered there. Value bombs dropped in every single time I've seen you speak. And what a great human being. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. By the way, is it okay if I write about you in my new book? As long as it's nice things. <laughs> oh, it, it's nothing but good because as everyone who knows me, it's all glass half full, baby. There you go. There you go. I love it. Okay. So that wraps up this week's episode of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast. What a treat to have Stephanie on once again. Thank you so much. I hope to see you knock on wood if the COVID gods allow in San Diego for Social Media Marketing World 2021. But until then, I'm DP Knuton for the Nonfiction Brand Podcast. And she is Stephanie Liu. And I'll be talking at you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>